to call to order the regular monthly meeting of the Avon Board of Education. If everyone could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Before we begin, I do like to read our mission statement just to keep our, our minds where our goals are. Our mission is to inspire in each student a joy and passion for learning and a commitment to excellence, personal integrity, and social responsibility. I think that's always the best segue leading into the Avon Achievers. So what I'm going to do is turn the mic over to Dr. Kim Nierman, and she will recognize our Avon Achievers this evening. Thank you. Um, I know that sometimes it's a, a question I'll get as to what happens um, during the summertime in school districts when school's not in session. And I can tell you there's a lot of work that goes in, um, in summers. And I have the great honor of being able to um, introduce two of the major things that Avon has worked on this summer. One uh, is under the leadership of my colleague, Jody Krasansky, who is a director of program director for our district. <coughs> Our district made an investment this year in K-3 literacy to provide just right readers for all of our students. And if anyone has been to Central Office of late, <laughs> there are books in every corner, all the hallways. All those books needed to be cataloged, determined what was the level, organized, and put into um, a series of uh, bins that now tell us what the just right is. And that work was definitely led by Jody and our reading consultants. And um, she had a number of volunteers who came in to assist with all those pieces. And I'll let Jody speak a little bit more to that. The other piece is the summer programming that we do for students with special needs. And I have to tell you, it is like building a school from scratch every year because it's uniquely designed for each individual student that comes. And so it's a full year's worth of work to really go into figuring out what's in that programming. Every year we have to hire our new teachers and our power professionals. Every year we have to determine what is going to be the instruction for our students and those materials. And there's a lot of organization that goes into that as well. And as great as that programming has been, one uh, missing component that um, my, my uh, colleague Tiffany Fox, who is really the charge of that, uh, she's our special ed supervisor, and I often talk about is we're missing that inclusive setting because it really is just students with special needs who attend this program. And this year we had a plethora of student volunteers who really took the leadership to come and be part of our program. So I'll let Tiffany uh, do that. Um, maybe we can start with Jody. So as, as Kim mentioned to everyone, um, this is probably um, an unprecedented, unprecedented amount of influx of text that we've had in a number of years. We did have, a, when we revised our ELA curriculum, a significant amount of curriculum materials for the classroom, but, the, but this really you know, kind of puts that in its shadow. Um, the books are of such quality and such quantity as well, and we're so excited for them to be rolled into the classrooms in K, one, two, and three. But, and, I, and I'd be really remiss in saying before I honor our, our volunteers um, that the amount of time it took even before the books arrived to select the right books, and Jess Bevel is here as well, she's a reading consultant at Thompson Brook School, and she was one of our three reading consultants in the elementary that really, um, put their heart and soul into this as well. And it's, it was a pleasure to work with you and the other reading consultants to do that. And it's just such exciting work. And I'm reminded by that with every book I, with every book I touch. And again, um, it's still not done. We're still working on it. We've got hours to go. So it's going to be there by Thursday afternoon. Um, but I'd like to, uh, to, to honor our volunteers. Again, um, so the first volunteer that I'd like to honor is Eleanor Buckle. Eleanor, Eleanor came to a master organization. She actually would tell us she'd take a break every once in a while and read a couple of books because they're so, they were such good books. But she really kept us on our toes and kept our books organized by level. Thank you, Eleanor. attend tonight, so 
efforts to The next two um, awards go to siblings. Um, Kiki, if it's right, Kiki and Malaya. Well, if anyone's coming up. I had the pleasure of working with um, Kiki on a number of occasions, and I'm you in one time, and I really enjoyed having you with me in the office and doing the work, and always knew that it was going to be quality work and so organized and neat and we're still reaping the benefits of all of that work that you're doing as we finally get to some of those books and catalog them as well as some additional tasks that you did for us um, to help us with another math with a, with a math project as well so thank you very much ladies Again. And you can see there was a number of others, as you went to the board packet, of volunteers that helped with the project. So thank you very much. Do you want to read their names for oh, the absolutely. television audience? Absolutely. <laughs> so we had um, two other siblings, Sophia and uh, Emma Mates came in from Canton to help with us. And then three other siblings, um, Grace, Emma, and Daniel Krasansky. Um, I guess I'd be remiss in saying that their father also came in. <laughs> so there were 48 parts to fill, and they were the car builders. Um, and then uh, Lorette Feidelson came in as well to help us out with some of our um, end of the year projects in our, with our spelling program. And Alana Dubois was also another volunteer that helped with the parts and some of the leveling. So it definitely took group. So thank you very much. Okay, this is them. Tiffany? All right. All right, well, thank you, Kim, for that introduction about extended school year. I know that a lot of people have that question sometimes, what happens all summer, and it really is like a microcosm of the school year and a school crammed into, you know, the month of July. Um, and you know, to give a little background, last summer we had some student volunteers who were mostly um, children of staff members who were working who decided that, you know, they would like to volunteer at our program. And this year, some of those students came back. We had some new additions as well, um, children of staff members. But we also had this year Avon students who independently volunteered their time to come and support our program and our students. And you know, it was just such a monumentous occasion because as Kim said, we have that, that desire to grow our program and include those peers in our program. And I think it really speaks to the, the leadership of our students and their citizenship within the community and their character, which you know, I think this opportunity helped instill in them as you know, Avon Public Schools. <coughs> so we really appreciate their work and you know, we hope that in the future we can expand on these opportunities and grow our program in the future. So it was, it was a wonderful opportunity this summer for you know, me as the administrator for ESY, but then also for the students as well. So I will honor them now. Our first volunteer um, is not present today, but his name is Cameron Baker. Next volunteer is Katie Butwell, who is not here um, today as well, but another wonderful volunteer we appreciate. The next gentleman is here, Sean Meerman. Um,
before you go on, I do want to just do recognition. Um, Sean Merriman also, I thought there was an, um, a certificate, I forgot to mention while I was up there, but he actually, um, in the afternoons and sometimes, he'd spend the morning in the, in the, um, in the school year, but would also then spend some time at Central Office helping with the book project as well. So dual recognition to Sean for helping out in both places. Thank you. That is a very impressive group. Thank you, Jody. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, I wanted to just take a minute to say the board members up here, as well as our student rep, Amir Johnson, can appreciate volunteerism. So I hope that this is just the beginning of a lifelong journey for you to continue doing that and helping your community in that way. So I know it probably would have been more fun to be playing Fortnite or you know, <laughs> hopefully reading at home, but we appreciate that you are helping us get the school year ready. It really makes a difference, and I think you're going to see it on the students' faces yourself, knowing you're a part of that. So I appreciate you all coming this evening. I know most of you are here for that purpose. So if you would like to be dismissed at this time, you are more than welcome to go, and we appreciate you again. to let them leave versus trickling out politely. So <laughs> it's just a little easier that way. So yes, please join us. So the next piece of our meeting is to approve minutes from three board meetings that we had. So if I could have a motion to approve the Board of Education regular monthly meeting from June 18th, 2018. So moved. Okay, David moves. Do I have a second? Second. Jackie seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Passes unanimously. Board of Education special meeting minutes from June 27th, 2018. Can I have a motion to move those? So moved. All right, Jason moves. Can I have a second? Second. All right, Jeff seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That passes unanimously. Third, Board of Education special meeting from August 8th, 2018. Can I have a motion to pass those as well? So moved. Jason moves again. Do I have a second? Second. Jackie seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? That passes unanimously as well. All right. Now this is the part for communication from the public. So if anyone would like to come forward and share some thoughts with us, we like to keep it to about three minutes time so that we can respect um, everybody's um, time here tonight. So if anybody here would like to speak. All set. All right. Well, thank you. The next item would have been our financial report, but given the timing of this being the end of the school year and the finance committee not having had a meeting prior to, it just wouldn't be appropriate to give a report at this time. There's too much compiling going on. So we will certainly have one in September at our next meeting. So we will move on. Heather, check for us. All right. So now committee and liaison reports again over the summer. We do take um, July off. We did obviously have a few meetings going on, but these might be incredibly brief reports, but I'll still check in with each um, committee chair. Curriculum and professional practices, Jackie, do you have anything? I have nothing to report, but we are meeting September 4th, and we're very excited to kick off the, the new year. Excellent. Thank you. And finance, Jay? I don't have anything to report. Thank you. Negotiations, Jason? Negotiations does not take the summer off. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're negotiating with the teachers as well as the custodians and maintainers. Um, both look likely to head to mediation. The teachers actually are scheduled for next week, uh, August 29th. And custodians and maintainers, I would say, is to be determined in terms of the date right now. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Policy, Laura isn't with us this evening. We did not have a meeting during the summer anyway. Um, liaison reports. So the board rep to Curriculum Professional um, Development Council, that did not meet yet either, but it will in October, Donna, is that right? Correct. Okay, so we'll look forward to that then. Um, board rep to the Avon Board of Finance, David? Yeah, I don't think there was a regular finance meeting. Okay, thank you very much. Um, board rep to Avon Town Council, Jason? The Town Council made up for it. We met <laughs> twice in July. Excellent. <laughs> 
So there's a July 10th special meeting and a July 26th regular meeting. Um, at the July 10th meeting, the council expressed uh, some compliments on how uh, the high school graduation went, so that was nice. Um, Heather McGuire and Bill Stokesbury, uh, in particular, were appreciative of the ability to give their graduates their diplomas. They uh, expressed their gratitude to the, uh, the administration for that. Um, there was discussion of the technology lease agreement that we had voted on back at our June meeting. Heather was present and answered some questions about that lease agreement, and that passed uh, the town council's vote. And then at both the July 10th and the July 26th meetings, again, more turf field discussion. Um, the highlights are it looks like there'll be a referendum on December 12th. Um, there was a fill contingency that the town council decided to add to the cost projections in case a change to the fill had to be made. Um, they've retained a company called Gradient to do a study of the crumb rubber fill. Um, Gradient is going to do a report that looks like it will be presented to both the town council and the board of education at a joint meeting likely to come up in September. Um, and according to the town council, their goal is to make a decision on the fill before the referendum. That's their goal. Whether it happens or not, we'll see, but that's the goal. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Sure. Anything else you'd like to add? Well, that's all I can think of. All right. Well, I appreciate it. <laughs> all right. Jackie, board rep to the Capital Region Education <clears throat> Council. Nothing to report, but we are uh, meeting, I think it kicks off in September. All right. Excellent. Thank you. So the next part is the board um, chair update. I was just going to um, mention thank you to all the board members for getting back to Jennifer Worsman at the town council side. They did invite us to join the town council for a joint educational meeting um, on September 13th at 7 p.m. So we'll learn more about the infill and I'm hoping that the community will be there as well so that we can all learn this together. So I appreciate you guys getting back to her for that. And we have convocation coming up this Thursday morning. Um, I was curious just to get a head count so that we know who to anticipate will join us that morning. It's, they're having a light breakfast at 7.30. We're starting at 8.30. My intention was to arrive around 8-ish. Does that sound fair, Bridget? Yes. yes. So anyone else able to come that morning will be in the auditorium here in the high school, correct? Is it, is it this Thursday, or when is it? I have no idea. It, it is this Thursday. Thursday. This Thursday. This Thursday. This Thursday. The so that is the 23rd. At 8 a.m. ish. It will start at 8.30, so if you come just a little before that. I'll be there. I cannot attend. I'll be taking my kids to college. Oh, my goodness. I know. I'm so sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so, Jason, are you... Jason? I cannot make it, unfortunately. Okay, Houston, you're still checking, or do you think you no, can make No, I've just written it in the book. Excellent. Thank you. It's David, official. do you have a sense? I sex? can't go. Okay, Bogdan? I have to check. You have some possibility, Jay? I'm good for the first hour, so okay. must leave Perfect. The I will be there, Jeff. Are you I'm able a to attend? Hopefully, Laura will be there as well. So that's good. It's just nice to have a good showing of board members. So that was the extent. We did have a bit of a summer break, but negotiations were going strong. So I think um, September will be um, an even more robust meeting. But I'm going to move right on to Bridget for the superintendent's report. Um, so we can meeting along. Thank you. Uh, first, to revisit the idea of convocation, uh, Ms. Moy and I spoke about ensuring that the Board of Finance members and the town council members were also invited. Um, Mr. Robertson and I spoke. He is out of town, so he is unavailable to be there. Um, so that said, what I have asked to happen is that if you know, Cheryl's obviously here tonight and took some RSVPs, but if you know you're going to be there if you could email and let Shirley know because I'd like to make sure that we have the seating for you and so on. I asked through Shirley if the Board of Finance and the Town Council do the same just so that we plan on uh, our setup. Uh, so you're I, saying we have to send an email in You addition? don't. You've already okay. said it tonight, but if you didn't let us know for sure tonight or something changes, if you could let Shirley know, that would be Got great. And also, just backtrack for a moment, because welcome, Amir. I, we did not know you would be able to make it with us this evening, so I'm happy to see you here. And for the, for the public, Amir is our student representative to the Board of Education. So my apologies, you are not listed. But do you have anything that you'd like to share at this point? Um, no, I'm not saying. Thank you. just wanted to make sure you had the opportunity. I'm grateful that you came in tonight to participate. Um, moving on to the hiring report. Um, you, it has been a very busy summer, which is to be expected um, in any school district uh, through retirements and changes in staff and so on. Of course, 
Uh, you've seen the reports, and you were here the night we appointed our new high school principal, so clearly that's at the top. Uh, we've hired a number of certified staff. Thank you to Dr. Nessa Rusak, who planned uh, great days of induction for our new teachers. Um, I was able to participate in, a, in portions of that alongside Donna. They've been able to uh, look at our mission statement, uh, look at our core beliefs, to dissect curricula, to have time in their rooms to set up, to learn our technology. Uh, really a, a very thorough job in uh, making sure that our new certified staff is properly inducted to the district, and I'm, I'm thankful uh, for all the planning and hard work that went into that. Um, and of course, Donna was assisted by the rest of our administrative staff. Dr. Wojtek did his part. Uh, Ms. Mishola, Dr. Merriman, Ms. Fox, who was here with us this evening. Elizabeth Ferry, who did a, a tremendous amount of training in Google and Google Classroom, Google Docs. Um, did I miss anyone? Uh, Jody. Thank you. Oh, she was here this evening also. And Jody Kuzanski. And, and of course, Miles Altimus. So, so you see, we all came through and spent some time. We, um, Jim Connolly came also. All the principals came. We had lunch together and so on. So we had a very productive new teacher orientation. And you'll see just how many of them we have hired. Um, at this point, we are still in the process with the director of guidance at the high school, so you see there's not a hire here. Um, we're, we're working through that hire diligently, um, and we'll have more on that another time. There's not much else for me to say there. It's a key position at the high school, and our intent was to have started the school year or shortly thereafter with someone, but as you know, we've had to repost that position more than once, uh, as I think I've mentioned already. So that is one you see not on the hire list. Um, I'd like to point out also that Ms. Moy is here with us this evening because she's our new board clerk. So um, we had posted this to the district on the outside. Shirley was the only internal candidate who expressed an interest in doing it and it makes perfect sense for Shirley to do it, to be perfectly honest, because as you know, as my assistant, what happens here at the board meetings is essential to be cataloged and I'm often asked things here that I need to remember to do the next day or or to answer questions about and so on and so clearly Shirley keeps me on track so having her <laughs> with everything that goes on on a daily basis so having her, her with us uh, for the meetings will be very helpful and so I'm thankful that Shirley signed on to do that for us. Um, I believe our uh, from the other perspective all of our non-certified staff are also hired with the exception of Unfortunately, our registrar slash receptionist, which you know is something that we were looking to um, implement this year. We went through an entire process, uh, had a, a candidate, and as sometimes happens, uh, that person accepted a different position within their own place of employment when we, they found out we were offering something that might be a little bit uh, better, they, they upped their offer, so to speak, and so I just reposted that today. So hopefully on the next hire list you see one there. Um, moving on, our enrollment report. Uh, we have seen a plethora of registrations daily. I'd like to point out there is one error on this report that I think is important to point out. Uh, this is, as you know, we made changes to the number of sections in some of the schools. Thompson Brook was one. In the sixth grade, there are not 10 sections, there are 12 sections in the school year that we are going into, which takes that number down to 22.33. In other words, some classrooms have 22 or 23, possibly 21. Uh, which clearly is a better number than 26 or possibly 27. We are, as I said last time, maintaining an eye on all of the class sizes, class sizes in kindergarten particularly. Um, our plan for the, for the moment is looking at the numbers in kindergarten to <coughs> pump the brakes, as, as I sometimes like to say, and make sure that as we start the year, the registrations stay where they are. Um, we see a lot of fluctuation in a school district in kindergarten. For example, students, uh, parents may register students and later withdraw them because they determine maybe they're not ready and they're going to wait for another year. We see that happen. We lose some students because of that. We may see even more come in 
we, we may see more move out. So right now we are status quo. We have not made a decision to hire an additional kindergarten teacher based on the numbers, but we are watching the numbers. And if we do not hire an additional kindergarten teacher, our plan as we move forward right now is to make sure that we have enough supports in those kindergarten classrooms through the teaching assistants and so on, which uh, will put more than one adult in the classroom. So in, in any case, we, we have a plan we'll move forward. Can I ask a quick question about yes. the enrollment report? Mm -hmm. I see at the bottom, thank you, I'm sorry, I turned it off earlier. I see at the bottom you're showing a difference, 102 less than last year. Is that less in August of last year or is that where we ended up from last year? That is in August. Okay, so it's August, August we're comparing. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. I Thank you. I'm looking just to make sure because I, again, new, new still in some ways. Yes, my understanding of this report that we generate is that it's August to August. Thank you. And as you know, we had a very large graduating class, for example, last year, so that was part of yes. the deviation that we see here. And we have registrations that aren't even completely in the system yet. I, how many people came in today, Shirley? In one hour, we had nine. Wow. Just in one hour. So every day it's been moving more forward. So I'm not sure where we'll end up in that number, but that's where we are. As of when this was run, I'm sitting, you see this is the 17th. Mm -hmm. So we're already a week out from this. Any other questions about this? I, I have a question. So the uh, on the line for TBS, you said <coughs> that's actually 12? For sixth grade, yes. And that's for the 2018. Are we going from 10 to 12? Yes, we went from 10 to 12. OK. Mm -hmm. Because we knew that was a larger class moving from fifth into sixth grade. All right, thank you. I had one other question that came to mind, just about the report itself. And feel free to tell me this would not be possible in any way, shape, or form. But when I looked at the report, it just came across to me like, is there a way to compare the enrollment in the building to what the building realistically could hold capacity-wise? Is that something we could, it always has occurred to me as, as a curiosity question. And if it's impossible to do, it's impossible to do this. Just something that, to me, has always been curious. It's not impossible to do. We could provide that piece of the outlook too. We know how many classrooms we have. How many, you know, at present, how many um, students we like to see in classes, and also by contract, how many um, mm -hmm. we're limited to to some degree, and how many teachers we have. So, yes. There's also a requirement on the number of square feet per student. Correct. So in theory, you can't blow through that, even Correct. if you had teachers. Hence the spots to put them in, also. Yes. Right. So just a thought. Okay. If we can do it, and thank you. We'll take that. A okay. worthwhile idea and something I'd be interested in seeing. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, moving on, you see we had a donation from the Pacific Life Foundation to Pine Grove School from the McGarry Family Foundation in the amount of two thousand five hundred dollars. And we also received a check, second check from the Pacific Life Foundation, which was a matching gift from Kristen McGarry in the amount of $350. And the donor has generously and graciously uh, stated that their intention was that this grant from them be used where it's needed most. So this uh, will be deposited into the Pine Grove School Student Activity Account, which will allow us to use it directly for the benefit of students, which, of course, I think is always where it's needed most. And we're thankful and appreciative, and we'll send our thanks out to the donors. Uh, security updates, uh, there, as you've seen, if you go through any of the buildings, there's a tremendous amount of work being done as we expected. <clears throat> and uh, this list changes from day to day also. So um, at present, what I can tell you is that um, at Pine Grove and Roaring Brook, all the exterior cameras have been installed. Uh, exterior cameras. At Thompson Brook, the exterior cameras are being installed this week. Um, the vendor is waiting on a second check from the town uh, to order some additional equipment for additional uh, installations to continue with that work, and there's not an issue there. It's proceeding forward, but just uh, checks and balances. Um, the locks, the equipment has been installed in all of the buildings, and we are now working on programming it this week, which is another um, enormous task related to infrastructure. 
and you know we've been working on the entrance ways of, at all of the schools that as we knew would be some of the slower pieces of, of this process and at um, just want to make sure at uh, the middle school the doors are being cut in this week the change that's being made there so we're we're progressing uh, there's been quite a bit of alarm testing and so on going on in all, all the buildings too. Unfortunately, that meant, for example, we had to move our teacher orientation out of this building and over to central office because we were listening to the beeping noise about every 30 seconds for eight, hour, eight hours. But these are part of the uh, upgrades and the tests that need to be done. So we are still on schedule. Um, our visitor management systems, for example, I didn't mention, but they have also been installed at this point, which was a huge undertaking, particularly related to the infrastructure um, of the wiring and uh, the, the cable and so on that had to be put in. Now, though, is the secondary task of what do the protocols look like for that, how do we train staff in it, and so on. So we are proceeding quickly in some ways, but slowly and steadily in others to make sure that we implement things properly and people are properly trained. So I expect to be updating you again on all of these probably for months moving forward. Um, any, any questions on any pieces of those or something I didn't mention that you're curious about? Thank you. So I just want to be clear, all the entrance ways will be the new lock systems be in place for the start of school for all the school buildings? Yes. Does that include central office as well? No, central office is not there. Okay. Yeah. But, but the student buildings will yes. all have it. Okay. Yes. Um, will we have the visitor management system, those policies, in place come day one of school? That, I do not expect them to use the technology yet and the reason for that is when we took a step back and we started talking more in depth about the red flag aspect mm -hmm. so if you remember the visitor management systems give us two main capabilities from a technology and a security aspect one is that we are able to upload data um, about custodial information so for example who can pick your children up who is, the, who is the parent for this child? Is this a person that's on the list for pickup, or are there any issues and this person shouldn't pick them up, and so on. That, number one, requires, obviously, very clean data to be uploaded. So one of the things that we are ensuring right now is that that is the data that's clean to be updated, which the, the back end of that is getting it again from all of our families. Mm -hmm. And so for that reason, we don't want to start the system as we walk in the door because we want to give everyone the opportunity to update their information and to ask um, families to make sure we have current names and phone numbers uh, of everyone in the system. And that also brings up a different point, which is it can't be that one division of the school has the real information and it's not in the database. So for example, sometimes what we see is the nurse's office may have different information than what student and what parents have uploaded into the main um, e-collect system. That's where we have to ensure the correct information is both in getting it from the parents and in checking it ourselves. So that's one thing we're making sure we are doing on our end right now. The flip side of that, the other capability, as you know, and this is where the red flag comes in, is related to when an ID, state issued ID goes into the system, it runs a cross check about um, sex offender registry status. And if a person um, shows up on the sex offender registry, there is a, quote, red flag. Well, the question becomes, and we've been having this discussion with the police department and so on, what happens then? And number one, if a parent is there for a student and for some reason they are on the sex offender registry, that doesn't deny them access to their child or their child's education. So. We have to proceed in one way when that's the situation, just with the knowledge of it. And on the flip side, for just for example, if a contractor is hired to come in through a company, and when they go through the visitor management system, something comes up, we now need to look at that differently. And so one of the things that Mr. Connolly did as a result of having these conversations was to reach out to some other districts who had implemented the same, so we didn't reinvent the wheel, what kind of protocols are you following in the building when that happens in between you and the police department. Well, lo and behold, what we found was, generally speaking, folks don't have them. And that was concerning to me to start off in that way 
without having a more in-depth conversation. So what we are doing, number one, I've consulted with the board attorney with the same question. Can you please you know, look into it and other, do you have any other districts who you've worked with or that you've seen? Have there been issues related to this and so forth? Interestingly enough, I actually talked to two of the attorneys that uh, represent the board. Neither had been asked this question, which I find a little bit odd because we definitely need to proceed with caution for how we respond in these situations and make sure that we're keeping the students safe, but we're also not putting the district in place of liability by the actions that we take as a result and with the information that we coordinate back and forth with the police department. So I have the board council doing a little bit of research for us there on the one hand. On the other hand, Mr. Connolly, um, the chief of police, and the, S the SRO and I are going to meet again and have the same conversation about what some of that flow of information and the response is because it's new for our police department also. So, so what can kids expect, like at Roaring Brook, what can they expect on the first day of school? Related to this? Yeah, related to this. They're going to walk in regular, yes. right? You yes. Just, and then the school's kind of locked for the day. Right. And they have a man people trap. Right. So right now we're sticking with people traps. Correct. So these are two that's basically, different. Right. right. It's two different things. So I just want, that's basically what parents will be Students experiencing. and parents don't really have much different to do right now as they come to the building besides when some of these entrances are finished, go in a different way. And we will still sign, for the time being, people in and out in the previous way until we make sure that this is ready to roll out without any kinks or as few kinks as we can ensure from the initiative as we go get it underway. So nothing different. You'll see the, the equipment there, but we won't be us utilizing it just yet. Sorry, I know you have another question. I didn't you make you actually brought up my follow-up, but that was good. <laughs> um, I do have one more question. We as a board have extensive conversations regarding the cameras. And I'm glad to hear they're installed or just about fully installed. One of the discussions we had was about who in each building would get access. Is there a way for administration, security personnel, and so forth to view uh, the cameras? Has that the logistics of that been all worked out? Will there be some sort of a viewing station set up from the first day of school? Will we be able to use the cameras on the first day of school? We should be able to use the cameras on the first day of school. Everyone who will eventually have access, which is not that many folks, but everyone who will have access will not necessarily have it on the first day of school, okay. though. So we have a list. Obviously, the administrators will be granted access. Mm -hmm. There's some training involved mm -hmm. for folks who have not used them in the past, um, including our uh, safety and security specialists here at the, at the high school that need some training on the new equipment. Mm -hmm. So f again, for that reason, people are not here right now. We need to make sure that they know how to use the equipment, that they know the limitations with which they operate in using mm -hmm. the equipment from a recording standpoint. That's only limited to certain individuals, for example. Everyone can't have unlimited access. So that's some of the training that still has to happen when they come. Last one, if you don't mind, I know I got a whole list here. Oh, that's fine. Um, the e locks are in place. I know there was a concern regarding some of our infrastructure originally over the summer. Has that all been resolved? Yes. That was okay. also related to the visitor information system, okay. even more than it was the locks. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate your responses. Thank you. A okay. yeah. couple of follow up questions since people have been asking questions. I might as well ask them too. Um, there are differences as to why you are on a sex registry offender list. Uh, are we pulling the national database? I believe this is connected specifically first to the Connecticut database. So you're not pulling national? No, I don't think this uh, All right. equipment I would have happens. to verify that, but I'll verify I know it's it, Connecticut. My understanding well, was that's not the... Okay, well that's that would, that would be a difference. Then what are you doing in terms of the uh, in light of the severity of the offense. That's part of exactly why I said what I did, because there is what comes up online and there is what may have actually happened. And one of the things that I think has to happen from our end is that we have an understanding with the police department about what does it look like when there's difference in severity. That, that's exactly why I said I think we have to get on the same page so that the district and the administrators and security personnel understand if they see a red flag related to this type of offense, that is most likely a different response 
than that kind of an offense. Is this a, at what point do we maybe make a, a call to the police department about someone being in the building versus, again, you're here to go with your child to a meeting and you have X events. So that's your question is the same question that, that I have for the police department. Now, I, I mentioned, I, I noticed you were very careful when you mentioned the cameras and, and uh, I will retaliate by asking a follow-up question. You said the exterior cameras were ready to go. So you didn't mention anything about interior cameras. What was it with? There, pardon me. No, just the exterior cameras have been installed and that was the priority. This okay, summer. so the we'll interior working. cameras are not done. Yeah. They're not completed. I, some of the work has been done, but they are not completed. That's my understanding. I just didn't want to That's speak correct. incorrectly. Yes. That's okay, correct. and the cameras are motion sensing cameras now? Yes. My understanding is they weren't yeah. all along, but I don't know. No, they weren't all along. When I, when I came on board, they, that was the conversation I had. I yeah. don't know about okay. before that. Um, and the ones on the exterior are capable of recording sound? I don't know that hmm. information. I'm first. sorry, but I haven't been asked that. And I haven't been asked that. You started either. before I came, as you know, so I have to find that out. Okay. All right. I will stop at that. Awesome. Thank you. I have a few questions. Or do you have? Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> well, I guess I want to just. Re uh, one of the thoughts I think when I hear um, Jeffrey in Houston and you speaking is that we certainly want to protect the privacy of people coming and going out of our building. You know, I think we are always going to be kind of walking that very thin line be right between knowing who's in the building and also I, I would hate for people to think when they swipe that card um, every little thing in their history is going to come up. I, I, people that work here to me? No, I mean people, parents like me. <laughs> when I, I think mine would be clean. Oh, but you mean in the visitor management? In the visitor man okay, yeah. management, Pardon I think me. it's Pardon really important that, we, uh, that the public be aware that we are anxious to protect privacy as, as we are also, oh, um, I think that's one of the things that we're struggling with and trying to figure that mm -hmm. out. And I'm grateful that you're looking into that. Um, I guess the other question I had about the cameras was, do we have any responsibility to send out a communication to parents that this is happening now and to kids that they're being watched constantly? Because they will be. I think that's what we all went for. But it feels to me like there should be a little bit of recognition of that to families that, you know, this is happening. You should know that you're on camera. Do we have any responsibility there or is it like the right thing to do? I think there's also a statutory difference between if it records sound or if it doesn't record sound. Yeah. But just, just to be generous to humans, should we, who go to the school, should we say, but, you know, just to keep you... I would like to know that. I will be telling my children. I think whether or not we have a, a responsibility, so to speak, is it the right thing to do? Yes. I think everyone should know because they're also part of the security upgrade. So I think, yes, everyone should know. These are here. This, you know, this is how, this is why we did this, this is how they'll be utilized. And I think we've already started some of that message. But when it's complete, I think people should know. And Houston, and we will, if I am wrong, we will come back. But I am nearly certain they did not record sound inside or out. But so can we tell people before school starts, if, if we have the exterior cameras going already? Um, well, then the question would be, do you need to post at the beginning of the driveway, or is it on the door adequate? Or probably we shouldn't be involved no, in I such think minutia. Send it. Or we send an email to everybody. I mean, you could right. do that, too. That, that's what, why not just send an email and say, welcome back. We're <laughs> watching. <laughs> 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 Where's something special? We, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> we have we have signs <clears throat> that the the buildings are monitored, monitored, and they won't go up. Okay. In addition to, it's for me that's the like, lowest bar of communication that I'm comfortable with. But I know that this is a board of nine, and maybe everybody else is more comfortable. There's cameras everywhere we go in life. That's true. And they're only adding more. And you can't go very far without being on somebody's camera. So uh, there's nothing we're doing that isn't happening at the local shopping mall and Walmart and the supermarket too. So and that it's a public, yeah, location. Yes. But. So we're living our lives in front of these cameras, like it or not. It's um, if anything, the parents would be more upset if we weren't doing this, that we hadn't gone the extra mile to uh, take care of situations that where the cameras could help.
So if we send out an email, that's plenty. The signs, I think, are enough. But that's as far as it needs to go. Okay. Anything uh, to add, Heather, that I left off related to the security updates? Because as you all know, I have to work closely with both Heather and Miles throughout this process, and Mr. Connolly, because there's the constant back and forth about getting the work done, moving along the finances to, to continue to work and so on. So I just want to make sure that I'll give you the opportunity if I miss something tonight. And I mean, we could talk about this for, for hours, but right. this is a very fair summary. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. I have one other question or comment on the visitor management system and the privacy issue that Jackie brought up. I'm assuming as I sit here that the database that this visitor management system accesses is the same type of database that I could look up on Google. Correct. And find, you know, yes. so anybody has access to this information. That's right. And I understand the privacy concern, but I think it's important to point out that this is not secret information. This is any one of us could type in somebody's name and find this out. Right, and it is specific to the sex offender registry. Technically, you can look up the national online. It's not going to check that. What about Connecticut? I think you can access Connecticut. Yes, you can. Right, you can access Connecticut online, but if you access yes. the national, it will pull them all down all at once. But what she said is that it'll be Connecticut only, which has pluses and minuses. We are, we are, we are checking. I'll check to okay. make sure. No, so, Houston, as your point, that if you're accessing a national database, it's not necessarily something accessible to everyone? Is no, 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 it's, it is accessible to everyone. So what you can find out online is probably greater than what the system will keep track of. So if you've got someone who recently came over from New York or Massachusetts or Rhode Island or California, it's not going to pick up on our system, is what I'm guessing. Well, technically speaking, they're supposed to register where they are now, so they should be on the Connecticut and database. And that slop is not, it's fairly large. But that's why you're checking as to what it is, and you know, the mere fact it was just raised, I'm sure you'll mm -hmm. find out what you need to do. I think my, my concern was that we should make sure that the communication on it is precise, because for some people, it might feel like, whoa, they're getting access to a lot of information. Even yeah. though it's specific to the sex, mm -hmm. people might just hear it and not come to this meeting, which I can't believe they're not here, but if they don't want to sit through this, and they might extrapolate in their head that they're getting a lot of private information, and we wouldn't ever want to discourage a parent from attending something for fear of when they swipe that, some, you know, something is going to happen. Well, the that, that gives rise to the question, if you come to a, an event afterwards, are you going to swipe people? No. Okay, that's so not, it's only during school point. hour. When the children are right. here under our purview. But, but yes. Just so you know, p parents are in classrooms all day long for events. Right, I, I can understand then, that. Then, yes. Mm -hmm. um, to your point, Jackie, we have um, a draft that we're not ready to send about um, notification specifically related to the visitor information system because it will be a change and people have to understand what we're doing and how it will look different when they come into the buildings. We're not ready to send that because we're not enacting it at this point. But it is pretty clear and specific. By the way, if anyone wants to know it, the National Sex Offender Database is nsopw.gov. Thank you. Thank You're you, welcome. Austin. I just thought you wanted to know that. Thank you. Any other board questions? Um, one final, and this is just to open up a, a conversation. Um, committee meeting days. We've spoke about this in committees, um, and I, I wanted to bring it out to the board just to, again, start a conversation. We have currently our dates um, scheduled for our subcommittees, policy, finance, curriculum professional practice through the end of December. Obviously, we'll need sooner than later to start looking at them for the coming year and turn them over um, by the end of January. That said, um, we've talked quite a bit about the policy and the finance being on the same night and sometimes running together and, and taking longer when we have to really drill down into financial matters and or policy that starts later. Um, and. I think that we need to just give some thought to, number one, the possibility that we look at some of our meetings on a quarterly basis or something like that. Um, 
but that we are purposeful in scheduling them at the times of years that some of them we really need to have at that point. So for example, the curriculum and professional practices is tightly coupled with the, uh, the CPDC, the Curriculum Professional Development uh, Committee. And there, we have run into some times already, and even just since I've been here, where, and tonight when the book, uh, the piece, one of the pieces we talked about, where one happens before the other, and it's not necessarily the most conducive to actually getting business done to be able to move items onto the board. So we'd like to be able to look at being purposeful and selecting some of those dates and not necessarily just saying it's every X Tuesday. I'm not suggesting that we don't establish a calendar of meetings because I also understand that then we're left at the mercy of doodle polls and trying to figure out when people are available. Sometimes that's going to happen no matter what because something else is going to come down the pike, say for policy, because a law changes and we need to get together sooner than we had intended. Mm -hmm. But that's the hopefully exception, not the rule. Um, one of the other things that uh, we've chatted about a little bit is the fact, of course, that finance, um, by the charges of that committee, needs to meet more regularly because we often bring things to the, to the following board meeting in the way of budget transfers and so on with the, the charge of that committee. So just as an example, one of the things that we were thinking about was what if uh, finance committee meetings were the Tuesday night of the board meeting at 6 o'clock because we already meet at 6 o'clock on a different Tuesday. Um, and that would allow us to still be able to move things forward to the board in the same night if, if necessary instead of the following week or um, and or allow more board members possibly to attend because there's often a, a number of questions around finance when we bring it to the board meeting and it was uh, my thought at least and talked a little bit about this with Deb and, and with Jay as the chair of that committee and of course with Heather <coughs> that um, since you are all already pretty much know which Tuesdays you have to give up to be here with us <laughs> If we tack down the finance committee meeting before that, you, more of you might be available to come and, and see that discussion happen and make it easier as we move business forward. So those are just ideas that you know, we're kind of thinking about and floating to, to think about how we do business efficiently. And that really all I want to do is bring it up as a, as a thought of consideration and to ask if um, you would agree, I don't mean motion, but you know, just that whether or not you would agree that <clears throat> we could put together another draft of a calendar, so to speak, of what some of these purposeful scheduling of these meetings might look like. So for example, reviewing the program of studies at the right time of the high, at the high school is something we need to do at the CPP meeting after it's gone through CPDC possibly. In, in installation of new courses. We need those to happen at the right times of year. So that, that, again, that's an example. So comments, feedback, suggestions, what do you think of, of um, the undertaking looking at this in a different way and bringing you something back? Are you thinking of implementing it in September or waiting until January since we already have the rest of the year scheduled? No, I think that um, we, again, if we change the meetings we have now, any of them that, and you know, some of them inevitably, I think will end up changing, but though any of those would then become special meetings because we've already posted the dates. So from an agenda standpoint, that's something we want to be cautious about. Um, but I think there will be some, just knowing the continuum of work, that I, I think we may need to change by default between now and December because that, you know, second Tuesday is not necessarily going to work for some of them. We already kind of know that. So I'm not looking to tear it up by the roots right now, but just moving forward, what might it look like? Other thoughts or questions? I mean, I'd be supportive of something where we decided intelligently to your point, so I don't see any reason not to. Yeah, I would be basically supportive. Uh, the only concern I have is that if you took something like um, the policy committee and moved to, let's say, a quarterly calendar where you had carefully chosen those quarters to coincide with the events that need to be covered, <clears throat> um, I would just want to make sure that um, we didn't have a plethora of special meetings start to creep back in and fill the calendar and bring us back to where we started. Okay. Uh, so I'd, I'd want to be on the lookout for that. That's a good perspective because I didn't have that 
in the repertoire for it moving in this direction. I'm always concerned about policy to change something and then the old method has a way of just resurfacing. <laughs> the submarine comes up oh, 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 from the Understood. ocean depth and it, you thought you sank it, but no, it's back. Uh, <laughs> okay. One of the other things too, and I, I failed to mention this, but as I think you've seen, there are often other meetings we, we do have to have um, that we're having trouble finding a time for because we are locked in in some of these other meetings that we do or don't necessarily need exactly on that date. Uh, an example is trying to get together to have the turf meeting. You know, there's some of right. our, our schedules, especially mine, because if I'm at all of them, have not lent themselves to finding mutually agreeable times with town council, the board of finance, for example, um, times that they may want it would be best if, for example, I attended one of the town council meetings to, to talk about something, and yet we have an X policy, you know, whatever committee meeting on that night, and we've had trouble there. So that was another reason that we were thinking about the efficiency of the schedule to open up a little bit more of the time for the other things, not necessarily the special meetings, but the special meetings that sometimes are joint meetings. Some of those combined board meetings are always going to be a challenge because the challenge is proportional to the number of people invited. Correct. You add to the number of people, you add to the problem. Uh, but for um, the special meetings, I would, wherever it's possible, I would much prefer to have a special agenda appended onto a regular meeting, even if we ran late because of it, Understood. as opposed to having to have another meeting, mm -hmm. because it's so much more uh, moving parts to assemble that meeting than it would be even if we had to stay late okay. for the uh, regular meeting. Thank you. Where we get that choice, that would be my preference. If I can just follow up with David, <clears throat> I, I agree I would rather see, I never want to see a long meeting, but I'd rather see a, a regular longer meeting than a special meeting, especially because I think, while I understand why we call it a special meeting, I think to the public they may not understand. Mm -hmm. And they've seen a tremendous amount of special meetings from us in the last couple months, and it's raised some eyebrows. What is going on? It has this imaginary sense of urgency when it's not true. We're, there's no urgency to these meetings. They have to be special because of the way it was announced. I, I just want to be weary if we switch to quarterly qu uh, committee meetings, for example, and all of a sudden there's a special finance committee meeting or a special policy meeting. Is the impression the public going to get <clears throat> something's come up that needs to be addressed now that could not wait to the next meeting? So I just that's another consideration. I'm not against dividing up. I do think certain committees may be able to be spaced out. I do think curriculum, and I know that committee has struggled a little bit exactly what our charge is, being it's this hybrid from some previous committees. Um, Finance is one that I think needs to meet very regularly. Mm -hmm. um, my only concern with policy is I know there is just a continual review of, of policies, and I think they may need the time, I don't want to speak for that committee because I'm not on it, but they may need the time to complete those reviews of the policies. Laura and I, I, I don't want to speak to it without her here, but she and I have had the conversation about focusing on prioritizing what needs to get revised mm -hmm. to be in compliance with law, for example, versus necessarily starting at one, you know, and going through 9,000. So, you know, mm -hmm. making the same point, but I, I think we have to be purposeful about how it's done. Um, I think, too, many of the special meetings, all of the special meetings we've had as a board, I believe, actually have needed to happen in the time frame. So mm -hmm. there has been a sense of urgency, for example, the last one in appointing the high school principal. That was, if we didn't do that, then we would have waited until tonight and then school would have start, you know, yeah. been in a different predicament. So sometimes they have been mm -hmm. for a sense of urgency. Um, but mm -hmm. your point stands nonetheless. And I think we will see, as we move forward in budget season, we will see special meetings absolutely for the finance mm -hmm. committee to meet and hopefully, honestly, that for the entire board to come to those meetings because we're we'll looking at budget workshops and, and those sorts of things that aren't on the calendar for us yet. So I think that's where we're most likely to see the special meetings would be in, in finance. I sometimes agree with Jeff's concern about having special meetings. It does draw attention just because of the name, although it may not be right. <laughs> that special. Um, I, 
as the finance chair, I'm comfortable doing it the night of the Board of Education meeting. Obviously, I want to talk to the other members before we mm -hmm. commit to that, but I think that could make sense. In terms of policy meetings, uh, I'm not on that committee, but just having been on the board, and the, I mean, that was always one of our most, it is one of our most important roles as policy as board members. So to go to a quarterly schedule, I feel like does not give us enough time to evaluate everything. Maybe every other month, or if you know, I would lean towards the committee to sign that, but I feel like quarterly is not enough time to spend on something as important as policy. Understood. So when Bridget and I had some conversations about this, she's already addressed everything that I shared some thought on. So the idea of efficiency is very appealing to me. We intentionally went for Tuesday evenings to make it the Board of Education night so that the community would be trained and we would be trained on our own calendars as to where we should be on that evening. The idea was also for the, um, the district to consider having concerts and events on Tuesdays maybe switching it to another night of the week so that they could attend our meetings if possible. So I shared that with Bridget, and I did say, rather than leaving it to when we need to, let's make a meeting, I do like the idea of having a calendar where we do it. We just need to figure out our spacing, because like you're saying, maybe quarterly isn't exactly right, maybe it is every other, but whatever it is to really respect our time, because this board certainly meets much more than the other two boards in town. and. Um, it's a big part of our lives, and so to respect that I think is important. So I'm, I'm grateful that Bridget is willing to bring that up. In my mind, I'm still trying to keep the idea of consistency, and I know that doodles are very difficult to have everybody participate in a timely manner. Um, so if we can create something that works for us and just give it some thought, because I think you've raised some really good points. So if we let that mull around a little mm -hmm. bit, I think we're starting a good conversation. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Just Put it out here and let's have some conversation and then I can go to the drawing board with the team and come up with some possibilities. Okay. My two cents is, and we can have further conversation about this, but when you have a, a committee like the Curriculum and Professional Practices Committee, it is a brand new committee and I think we're actually missing some elements of what it used to be that the community really appreciated because it was really, um, there was a time when we really were the place that people who didn't want to speak at a big public meeting would share their concerns um, about school climate and certain things that were, I think, really important. I like the idea of being more efficient. You know, I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel every Tuesday. <laughs> we could kind of make it work when, when we need to. But for curriculum, it's hard for me to understand how we should be doing this, because if we, if the four of us sit and listen to two and a half hours of curriculum, but then we have to present it to the other five people who have to probably are going to have the same questions, right, that we had, or not. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Like, what, how do we translate that, that we're not being redundant? Or what, you know, because oh, four of us then have to sit through it twice. Is there any benefit to, with certain things, presenting it to the full board? Or does the full board rather have us just make the recommendations and and hope we're on, we're hope we're on. I mean, you'd like to think there'd be some level of trust with the committee, that's the point, right? But I also think, Jackie, that, and we haven't necessarily had it yet, there may be things that we may raise in that committee that we say, all right, before we take it onto the board, let's address these issues. That if we raise the issues, that when it comes to the full board, those issues have been resolved. I think that's the hope of that work. You know, I, the, we've been fortunate, I think, in that the curriculum that's been presented to us has been well thought out, developed, and, and laid out for us. But we had, when we looked at the world language curriculum, we had some very in-depth questions. So if there were some issues, it can be raised and addressed and fixed before the full board. That's the hope to make this meeting. I, I understand that's the hope. I think that is a good idea. But I have historically sat through many kind of redundant presentations, which was fine if that's the right, if that's the best way to do it. You know, I think. Well, I, we have to I think it's that. partially the responsibility of the subcommittee to distill the material and basically the, the board as a whole should have reason to believe or to assume that the subcommittee exercised due diligence and poked and prodded and investigated the, what the uh, finer issues were. And by the time it comes back to the full board, you would think that a brief synopsis would be good enough to explain both sides of the issues that were considered and how we got there. So we could take something that took uh, 20 minutes to discuss and boil it down to a two-minute summary of how we got there. And so um, 
it shouldn't necessarily be that bad. I know the threat is always there, that, <laughs> that the full board might relitigate every single point that was considered by the subcommittee. And I would hope that doesn't happen. But it has, uh, it has it, traditionally, that is how we've done it. You know, Mr. Pelling would come up to t talk about APECE. -E. Right. We'd spend a long time talking about it and questioning, of course, and then yeah. he'd come here and talk about it and we'd question it, which might be how it has to be done sometimes. Well, um, could it be possible that the board, the committee chair, present the curriculum and then have the support staff there to answer any additional questions? <laughs> I don't know what the protocol yeah, would be. That's a great but, but you know what, the idea is that you should be able to summarize, <laughs> right, what yes. the committee's decision was, that we decided to pass this along because of this, 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 and this point. And if there are additional questions, having, you know, the assistant superintendent here, obviously, as well as any other staff that may be here to answer specific questions, I don't know what the protocol is. I don't know what that would look like, but that may alleviate some of the concerns that we at the committee level get the big presentation and we go through the, the nuts and bolts. I like the idea. I think it's a cultural shift for this board mm -hmm. if we get there. Um, I, I think we should keep talking about it because I, mm -hmm. I would like that idea. Um, but inevitably, there will be something that pops up, right, that you feel really strongly about and need a little, I mean, you, any, any right. of us. And I, uh, I understand. Uh, what I'm used to seeing in, in corporate life is you have upper management that has to see a presentation, but it's a brief summary of what middle management considered, and uh, the people in the middle who really worked out the, uh, the nth level of detail and figured out how much everything was going to cost and what the timeline was going to look like. Uh, upper management was never in a position to second guess them or to uh, relitigate all the little decisions that make up a larger initiative. Uh, if our culture has to change so that we recognize that, then okay, so be it. Um, I know that when a subcommittee is, is talking about something to the full board, if it was you know not the committees that I'm on, let's say it's the bargaining committee or so forth, uh, I don't allow myself to raise too many questions about it because I know that um, if, I, if I have a question that I don't think everyone is considered, or if I think it's really new, or if I think it was missed or maybe overlooked, I might raise that issue. But other than that, no, I'm listening just to hear the summary. And if the summary all makes sense, I'm on board with it because uh, I don't want to sit there and relitigate every point that they consider. So um, I, uh, I'm sorry, someone else. Yeah. I mean, did you have something to say? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you just moved your hands up. <laughs> I think this is a kind of an, an age-old question of, of working with, with any board, whether it's a board of ed or, you know, as you said, it could be in corporate America. Yeah. Um, you know, to some degree, I, I think we could take either either end of this, and we just have to work through this a little more, <clears throat> and, you know, I want to beat a dead horse here tonight, um, but to some degree, I think, you know, well, to a large degree, we as a board have an obligation to understand at least the basics, right, of what you are taking action on. Right. And so I think if we were doing it in the ideal way, in the committees, you know, I always think of the committees like workshops, where we're working, you know, perfect example, Jeff brought up. He's on the curriculum and instruction, the curriculum and professional <coughs> practice committee. Um, he asked some questions from that vantage point that may, someone else may not have asked because he's gotten more into the nitty gritty of that, that position. Likewise, Spivak would do the same if it were related to finance as long as he has spent working on that angle. I think what that ought to do is for us as the administrative team, give us the roadmap for how it looks when it comes here. So, for example, I'll use the program of studies example from the high school because it's, I think, a perfect example when it relates to this type of an issue. Bring the team from the high school to the CPP committee. Let's go through the finer points of that. The slimmed down version, after we have all of that conversation, we know what the questions are, we know if there's anything we need to revisit, and hey, if Jeff had the question, someone else might have the question, let's put that in the information. In my view of the world, we've done that in the committee and the workshop, and then we and they come here and give you the condensed version of it alongside of the committee chair so that you are making an informed decision as a board. 
I don't think that's how we've necessarily done it thus far mm -hmm. since since I've been with you. But I think on the bigger items that you have to take action on, that it should look more like that. We're talking about you know the, the budget transfers and some of the more routine work that we, to your point, hash out in the finance committee meeting, and we don't need to litig relitigate every aspect of it, but to give the overview of this is what we did and this is the recommendation, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But I think there's other times when we need to reconsider the way these, the committees and the board is working back and forth. Some of that will mean some repetitiveness. If you sat with us on the committee, mm -hmm. you're going to see some more of that when we get here. But I think it's important because you wouldn't want to be out in the public and have a constituent or someone walk up and say, you know, what is, why did we uh, remove X class from the program of studies? And you had to say, I don't know, I'm not the chair of that committee, you have to, <laughs> you have to go mm -hmm. ask. Yeah. That, I, I don't think that would, you know, do for any of us to not be able to. Because we're voting on all this, right? So Correct. our names are attached to <coughs> everything. Yeah. So I think we just have to approach each of them, each of these action items, in a way that's commensurate with the weight of the decision and the discussion that had to go into it. Move to close debate. Do I have a second? Do you want to debate more? Go ahead. <laughs> I don't. I, I wasn't necessarily aware it was a debate, more, well, more of a discussion. Just that. <laughs> Move just to close discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments or questions? I think, again, it's the start of the conversation, so I think it was a good one. It'll give us things to reflect on, and so our next probably will happen within committees as well. Um, it's just going to educate us moving forward on how we work, so. Thank you. One last thing for my report, I'll point out, uh, I have an intern who just began with me from the superintendent program at UConn to Mr. Tyrone, Dr. Tyrone Richardson, who is- uh, Nice to meet you. An executive director in Hartford, which is a new title for, call it, like an assistant superintendent, yeah. correct? in charge of principals and uh, leadership of the buildings. Mm -hmm. So we just met for the first time, was it, was it already yesterday, it feels like a while ago. Um, you have to do an internship in the state of Connecticut uh, with a sitting superintendent to be able to qualify for a superintendent certification. Um, this is the third time I've had an intern, so welcome. You will see uh, Tyrone with me as often as possible because that is the the goal that they are exposed to as many possible um, situations, decisions, and conversations as possible. So welcome. Thank you. Happy to have you. I wish I knew earlier. I thought you were from the press because no one else normally takes it's notes like during the meeting. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Sorry, I left that from the end. Uh, so I think the end. I'll also be introducing him out to the district because uh, we need teachers and, and staff members in the buildings to know it, so he's not a surprise when he's out there visiting with me. They say, oh, that's the intern. So okay. thank you. Excellent. Can I just say one thing, Deb? So yes. I'm all for brevity and efficiency, and I think all of us are. Uh, just to add the point of the prior discussion, a little bit of a different angle is, I think Jackie mentioned these are newer committees, at least the way they've been shaped from old committees. So I don't know if part of your revision or look back and, and this is also about, is this the right answer? Just to, to look at it. I don't have any okay. opinion either way, but that's another opportunity for thank that. Thank you. Thank you, Bogdan. Are you all set? Yes, Is thank it? you very much. Okay. So now we'll move on to the consent calendar, and I will um, ask to remove item C, 18-19-05, approval of the high school field trip to France in April of 2019, because as you can see, we did not receive the information in our packets. They didn't have it um, prepared for us to have the discussion, so hopefully that will return to us in September. Does anyone have a request to remove either of the other two items? I do okay. remove um, item A, because I have a question about it. Okay, so item A is removed. Anybody about item B? I'll move to approve the remaining consent calendar. Okay, Houston moves. Do I have a second? I'll second. Jeff seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, now discussion of item A. Um, Jay, would you like to speak to your I just want to understand if it was in the budget, and I don't remember, you know, we doing it in the past, so I just want to understand from that perspective. Well, uh, I am, my understanding from going through the budget, as you know, when I arrived and 
uh, presented is that yes, this is in the budget, but I will let uh, Dr. Rusak speak to the historical. This is the teacher on special assignment um, position. Uh, the math coach, Mary Lebowski, was in this position. She has returned to the classroom, and now this position has opened up. That particular position, if you recall, um, Dr. James Fuller was in the position first for ELA support. Then Mary Lebowski moved into the position um, because teachers expressed the need for more coaching and support and professional development in math and science. Now the teachers are requesting more support, training, and coaching in the area of enrichment and extending the curriculum, um, you know, the top end. So this position has been in the budget for a number of years. It's just a different title and focus of that position. Okay. Thank you. So now, oh, Can I also ask a question? Of sure. This one or not? So it seems to me that the way it's worded in the, in the position as far as enrichment and differentiating is really in support of of our mission of inspiring the student. I think it speaks to that a lot. So I applaud that if that's the intent, just some validation in terms of that, if that's the focus as you mentioned. Uh, a follow-up question on that is, so since there's a newer focus to this, how are we, what kind of framework are we providing this position to help them implement these initiatives? This will follow the Renzulli, you know, kind of that gifted and talented of how maybe we compact curriculum, how we extend curriculum, um, more student choice. Uh, the position has not yet to date been filled. I just want to say that uh, we did look at the posting to see if anyone internal was interested. They were not. Um, so we reached out to the um, gifted and talented portion of UConn, um, some folks there that have obviously put their little feelers out and let people know so we have a richer pool now so we will start interviewing for that position but it really is to support teachers on how to compact curriculum extend as i was just saying that work okay well that makes sense i think it sounds like you're saying teachers are supportive of this anyway and it's kind of their initiative to, to drive this i was just asking if it's a new position to have that support there that allows them to fulfill all of these mm -hmm. items that support we provide through our office and you know we kind of see what we need so to speak and that's how we did it with the math and the science really based on what is the teachers needs and then we're responsive to that so teachers have said this is the area where they need some more professional development and assistance so that is the purpose of putting the position in thank you oh yeah so this was really on the consent calendar as a job description um since we've removed it we've had discussion should we now act on it as approving the job description so that they can go on to hire someone to fill this role? I'll move to approve it. Okay, Houston moves to approve. Do I have a second? Second. David seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The position passes unanimously. All right, thank you. Now we move to the part of communication from Board of Education members. Does anyone have anything that they'd like to share? All set? All right, we have our second area of communication from the public. So Mr. Macy, I'm not sure if you would like to say anything, okay? <laughs> and I just remember your name, Tyrone. I don't know, doctor, what was your last name? No, it's name? not doctor. It isn't doctor yet? Oh, sense. I thought you were done. That's all right. My fault. <laughs> <laughs> what is your last name? Uh, Richardson. Mr. Richardson, would you like any to comment at all on how the meeting has gone? No, just um, that I appreciate the time okay. uh, to be here and very thorough. Excellent. We look forward to seeing you more often, so thank you. All right, so now we do have a portion of executive session that we will be moving into. Um, I would like to invite Dr. Carnamola as well as Ms. Mashad to join us. We'll be discussing an update on contractual negotiations. Are you so moved. Okay, Houston moves. Um, can I have a second? Second. second. So all in favor of moving into executive session? Aye. Aye. All, um, any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so we will move into executive session after taking a brief recess to allow the camera to um, shut down as well as the rest of our attendees to dismiss themselves.